beating on this young man. Little boy looked like he was, I thought he was a little girl. He looks like he was about 80 pounds. You see a dude bigger than me whooping on this little young man. And at the same time, when the white boys get it done, what happened? They, oh, okay, Mr. White Guy, calm down. And these dudes jumping in their face, spitting all in their face, you know, fluids coming from their body. By the way, this cop who attacked our young brother ain't got no mask or nothing. So not only is he whooping on this young man, he is also putting his life in danger because he don't know if he's asymptomatic corona. So this is a problematic situation that we continue to face in our community every single solitary day. And if we galvanize all the men, stop being, excuse me, pussies, and stand up, we'll, we could potentially get some things done. Because, oh man, these chicks struck because y'all act like a bunch of pussies. Take lead of our community and, and the women will follow. But why would a woman follow you and you scared to defend her? You, you a clown. You know, you, you stand around, these brothers stand around videotaping this young brother get whooped on. Hey, man, y'all do understand, according to the United States Constitution, in the event that these martial, these race, race, race soldiers violate the law, it is your constitutional right to bust that up. But we don't, we don't pay attention to that type of stuff. And we keep, oh, man, woe is me. We all know what we going to do. Well, we need to stand up and exercise our rights just like they do. Remember a couple of years ago in Oregon, a bunch of uh, white men with rifles on a government facility again, and they had to talk them down. They talking them down because you standing around asking, but uh, man, you go, you know, man, you know, no, no, but see, we don't, we don't move as a fence. And I said, look, stop telling me about man, brothers ain't gonna know because. Or they used to look. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And if you want to continue to, uh, uh, if you want to continue to pretend that this is not a problem, go right ahead. Go right ahead. I'm tired of it, and you, you too can be tired of it. But the only way, look, I told a story a couple weeks ago. You said Michael Max in the middle. I mean, uh, Mon King. In the middle of Selma, Alabama, by himself, those white people would have killed him immediately. But when you stand together and fight for something, you can get things done. But we always talk about what it used to be, what it ain't going to be, and then wonder why we don't get it done. We don't get it done because we ain't trying to get it done. It's easy for us to complain. It's easy for us to piss and moan. It's easy for us to do all this stuff that's not going to help us. So... If y'all want to do this, let's get it done. Point blank. Period. Now, when I spoke about Joe Biden a few minutes ago, is he the perfect candidate? No. But see, the other side, they have an agenda. The, the white supremacists over there, they have an agenda. And their agenda is to hold working class people down by the bottom of their boot as long as they can. They don't give a damn who's at the front of the line. They have one of the most intelligent questioned people in the history of the country tooting their horn. And they don't give a damn how stupid he looks. They don't give a damn how stupid he sounds. He's putting forth our agenda. And that's why we need to get behind this clown Joe Biden. Again, he's just, he's not the better choice. He's the less dangerous choice. Because again, if you let this dude get in for four more years, and, he, and, and Ruth Bader, uh, Ruth, Ruth Gainsburg, and that other dude who's seventy, if they pass away, guess what's going to happen? They will. He will put two white supremacists in this on the Supreme Court. And do you understand that the Supreme Court is the only reason your ass is not in bondage? They can interpret the Constitution the way they want to. Uh, uh, they can interpret it the way they want to. And when they interpret it the way they want to, your ass can end up back on the plantation. So keep playing with these people and you might catch the shit end of the stick, as my mom used to say. I'm just letting you know, these are the things that you have to fear. Fear. People don't get motivated with words. 
when you realize that your granddaughter could potentially be sold, your grandson, your niece, your nephew, your younger cousin could potentially be sold, and nobody around the world is going to say anything, ask the people in Germany, ask the people from this country that they call the Native Americans, ask anybody in the world, because don't nobody come help you. This, this country got the greatest army in the world. So who's going to come along, man? You need to stop doing that, man. Shut up and mind your business. That's what you're going to get. So keep playing. And if this dude, you see how the way he was, see, look at the way that he was treating the Latino community, the Mexican, the Mexican community, to be specific, you next. So keep playing. Then, you know, it's been a, 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 a onslaught of, hey, man, the Democrats ain't never done nothing for us. And if you believe these other guys are going to do, do something for you, you have lost your mother freaking mind. And Clarence Thomas ain't going to do Jack. Don't look for his hurt. Exactly. Because he's part of the situation. He part of the get down. And they'll drag his black ass right out the Supreme Court too. So, he playing, y'all. He playing, and this is what's going to happen. I'm just letting y'all know. They trying to turn this in, into a, a morality battle. Go to the store, pull out a dollar, and you're going to get a person who raped one of your uh, grandparents, one of your aunts. You're going to get somebody who beat one of your grandparents, grandfathers, or one of your uncles. Ain't no morality in the damn uh, 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 residency seat. He's just, you just put the person who you think will do the best job for you. And if he don't do what you want, you get rid of his ass. And that's just it. You're hiring a CEO. This is a company. And if we are shareholders, and if you don't roll in that direction, this company will take your house and, 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 and inject intimate domain, take your house and build a United Center on top of it, or Yankee, the new Yankee Stadium on top of it, or the new Giant Stadium on top of it, or the new LA Coliseum on top of it, or the new wherever you live, they're taking the stuff. And that's what I'm trying to get you to understand. So when they start talking about what Joe Biden might be up for sexual assault, well, he might be up for sexual assault, and that's the first one. The dude in office has 13. One possible 13 guarantee. I'm taking the one possible every time. That's just me, man. I just need us to come together and stop arguing about a bunch of nothing. Because we're not. We're, we're not we're, we're not we're not doing anything to help each other with this. We really are not. I'm just saying, man. We are not trying to do what it takes to be the best that we can be. Oh man, this country don't care about us. I'm not asking nobody to care about me. What I am, what I am asking you to do is get together with your people in your community, hold hands, lock arms, come up with a plan. And then the people in the next community that look like you say, hey, this is what we came up with. What are y'all talking about doing? Cool. Let's get together. Not if it's there and continue to do it. And then make the system work. Because once you start talking to each other, you'll start building things. And once you start building things, things will get done. And once things get done, you can make them do it. Or at the end of the day, you can get it done yourself. But, hey, why would you try to use your money to build an after school center why would you try to use your money to build a a a a a, 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 a workforce situation when you can use the united states federal government's money and get it done with their dime because you're participating that's all i'm saying man y'all heard me last week listen to the show last week i'll send you the link reach out to me again say rap i forgot to listen it is it makes in my text i send you the link again we must create opportunities for employment. This is how you do it. I was talking to the brothers Tuesday night and I was telling them the reason the Asian community wins is because the number one producer of noodles in the United States of America is the Asian community. Guess who consumes the most noodles in the, uh, in the United States of America? The Asian community. Guess what they put on it? Soy sauce. Guess who makes the most soy sauce? The Asian community. So, if you're making what you eat, you're eating what you make, and you are employing people to make the things that you eat, guess what? Everybody's working for everything. 96% of Asians work for Asians. So, guess what? Who eats more fish than anybody on earth? The people that they call African Americans. Is that 
that's an oxymoron, y'all. I don't want to get into that. That's a whole nother show. The African American community, I hate to call us that, but for all intents and purposes, that's what I'm going to call us. The African American community eats more fish than anybody in the world. There's a building right here on the west side of Chicago. It's about story high and it's 92,000 square feet. Imagine. And it has uh, 300 park spaces. They, they, uh, they, I don't know that out the top of my head. I drove past it. Now, if we leased out or purchased that building, we could put tanks in that building. But those tanks would be like giant fish tanks. We could have farm raised perch, farm raised whiting. Farm raised catfish, if that's what you like, or whatever. And then, since we eat more fish than anybody, we can ship out fish throughout the country. Now, guess what else we eat? Hot sauce. We call it black salad dressing. If we make the hot sauce that we put on the fish that we all eat, guess what? It is such Trotter's working there. Kelly, Kelly White is working there. Shottown's First Lady is working there. Lisa Duke is working there. Guess what? Now you're at the hot sauce factory. I, I gave y'all the game on the hot sauce last week. Joe and my buddy Kevin Fuss have their own sauce. Now, Kevin Fuss, we can mass produce that. And now we have manufacturing companies for hot sauce. And Kevin Fuss sauce, Joe Houston sauce, and whatever hot sauce we like. And guess what? We make the fish. We eat the fish. We put the hot sauce in the, uh, uh, the other sauce on the fish. Everybody working at manufacturing plants. And we are employing each other throughout the country. This is all I'm saying. It's not hard. It's just a situation in which we must galvanize and get it done. I'm coming up on a break right now. I want y'all to listen to this. This is the celebration of the power of the womb. I want y'all to listen. I'll be back in a second. We continue the show. Thank you for tuning in to Build for This Network. Thank you for listening to me. I'm H. Rob B. I'll be back in 11 minutes. 63 seconds. Islam? Islam. The prophet told me several things. He told you and the world. He said, I am a lost prophet. He said that, right? He also said, have a deep appreciation for womanhood. Do you women know how powerful you are? And how much we appreciate you and your womanhood. Do you know? that you can hold any office that a man can hold in the Morris Science Temple of America. Do you know that your position is to teach these little ones to what? Love instead of hate. That's a powerful job. Do you know, woman, that the difference between you and I is that you have a womb and I don't. (laughs) So we call you the man with the womb. Because in order for me to get back here, I got to see myself which is you. I have to put myself in your womb to get back here again. Do you know, sister woman, do you know and realize the power that our prophet Nova Jirali has given you to teach the nation? Our first teacher is that man with the womb. She Teaches us everything. I know when I was a small boy, my mother was the world to me. And when I got on the roller coaster as a young man and and was going down the roller coaster as it twisted, the first person I called was who? Mama. 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 Help me, Mama. There's nothing more calming than for a man to lay his head in his woman's bosom and receive comfort. Mm -hmm. That's what she is there for, amongst many other things. However, when the prophet came here, our women had been tossed into the cares of the world. And the cares of the world was like a vast ocean. 